It is now the year 2023, and what brings with it is a whole brand new host of amazing horror films, which I hope are going to be amazing to look forward to. So this is going to be my list of the ones that I'm looking forward to, and two at the very end, which are my favourite and my most anticipated ones yet. So let's get into it. Megan. Each and every year, Blumhouse brings out a plate of horror movies that I just eat all the way up. The Halloween trilogy, Freaky, Paranormal Activity, Happy Death Day. But this year, they finally bring their own version of the killer doll with Megan. This movie just looks nuts. And with a recent interview from the team behind the movie, they've said that it was originally rated R. But they reshot a lot of footage after the first trailer went viral on TikTok. The movie was re-rated to PG-13 and is supposedly not as gory, but is a lot more scarier. To which I will wait and see as there have been some PG-13 with some pretty big scares. Written by Akila Cooper, who wrote The Bonkers Malignant, I could hope that this movie delivers. My next movie is Knock at the Cabin. Now, I was burned by M. Night Shyamalan's last film, Old to which the trailers made it look like something that the movie wasn't, and now with the recently a judge ruling in the favour that misleading trailers could cost the studios millions of dollars, as they could potentially be sued for misleading customers, I'm hoping Knock at the Cabin is exactly what the trailer looks like, which is basically Ron Weasley and Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy trying to prevent the apocalypse by offing a family. The entire premise just sounds amazing, but like I said, I was burnt by M. Night's last movie, but I will give this one a shot. Later this year, we also have the first of a brand new trilogy from Blumhouse, The Exorcist. Now, The Original Exorcist is one of my all-time favourite horror films. It's one of my favourite films in general. It's just such a well-made film. And especially when, uh, you know, a lot of the film is hardly any horror. Written and directed by the team behind the recent Halloween trilogy, to which the less said about Halloween ends the better. This new legacy sequel stars the OG mother of them all, Ellen Burstyn. Not much is currently known about the plot. All that we know is that a father of a possessed child looks for help from someone who has dealt this before, and that is Chris McNeil, played by Ellen Burstyn. I'm very hopeful for this movie, and I do hope it's in the vein of the first movie, to which the first 90 minutes is a very tense drama, you know, family tragedy, and then the last 30 minutes is just a balls-to-the-wall horror fest. Hopefully they can do the original movie proud. This year we will also be seeing Dracula back on the big screen, with none other than Nicolas Cage playing him in Renfield. This is going to be a bit of a different type of Dracula movie. Nicholas Holt plays the title character and leaves Dracula's side to go find love in New Orleans, where he falls in love with Aquafina's character. Seeing Nicholas Cage on screen as Dracula is going to be a pure delight, as the set photos do make it look like he's still dressing from the 70s. We also have coming out this year, part 3 of the X trilogy, Maxine. Starring the amazing Mia Goth as she tries and makes her way into the world of adult VHS in the 80s, and more than likely some very gory and squeamish horror thrills. Now, Mia Goth became the new face of horror last year, no part in thanks to her two starring roles in X and Pearl. These movies came out in the span of about 10 months of each other, and it was just an amazing surprise. Ty West filmed X and Pearl at the same time, with Pearl being a secret project. It's almost like he knew people were going to love X, and I'm glad that he had that thought, as X and Pearl are in my top 5 favourite films of last year. In July we have the 5th part of the jump scare galore franchise, Insidious. This one is number 5 and is being called Insidious Fear the Dark. For this movie we're back with the Lambert family after having 2 movies away from them. We can see that the family has grown and that the story is actually set 10 years after part 2, where we see Josh played by the always amazing Patrick Wilson dropping his oldest son Dalton to university. Dalton's college dream becomes a nightmare when the repressed demons of his past suddenly return to haunt them both. With James Wan on board as well to produce while Wilson takes his first directing gig, this has all the tools to be another outstanding horror movie in an already horror icon franchise. 
The next two are my top two picks for the horror films, which I am absolutely, I am just giddy with delight and I cannot wait to see them. Number two, Scream 6, or Scream Roman numeral 6, or Scream with two explanation marks, whatever you want to call it. This is one of my most anticipated movies of the year as I love Scream 5. It was such a nice and fresh reboot to the series, to which we have seen other movies try the reboot phase with legacy characters. They didn't really work, and they went the way of sinking to the bottom of the ocean. I'm looking at you, Paranormal Activity, next to Kin. You are absolutely dreadful. Scream 6 being set in New York at Halloween gives us a whole new setting and something that has been missing from the horror genre for quite some time, and that is the feeling of being nervous. Anyone can be the killer in these movies, and with it being set as Halloween and seeing that there's numerous people dressed up as Ghostface, gives me the heebie-jeebies just thinking of it. Now, my number one most anticipated horror movie of 2023... I'm so happy this is having a cinema release and not going to streaming as it was originally intended. Evil Dead Rise. The Evil Dead series is my second favorite horror franchise ever. I've been waiting on the new movie since Fede Alvarez made the semi-reboot in 2013, which is an absolutely phenomenal movie, to which it has some of the greatest practical effects ever seen in a horror film as well. But with this one, this new movie is telling the story of two sisters who stumble across the Necronomicon Book of the Dead, and they must save themselves and their children from the oncoming onslaught of deadites. Being set in an apartment building as well, we're going to see some really cool practical effects, I think, as well. As mostly Lee Cronin, the director, he has said that the movie used over 6,500 litres of fake blood. Fingers crossed for this one, guys. This is the one I'm really looking forward to, and I really, really do hope it's a great film. But that's what we got, guys. Let me know below what ones you're looking forward to. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.